today we're going to be showing you how we make our chicken coop that's a portable chicken tractor. So stay tuned and here it is. So for my two main runners for the chicken tractor, I'm going to be using 1x6, 10 foot long, pressure treated wood. I'm just cutting a probably like a 20 degree angle off so that way when we go to pick up the chicken tractor and move it we're not fighting against the ground and binding we'll have a little bit where we'll have a little bit so we can actually pick up the tractor without the one bys hitting the ground right away once I have the chicken tractor all put together you'll see what I'm talking about Hold the tape measure. Oh, okay. I need you to hold the tape measure on your angle right there. See that? I'm going to hand you the tape. Right no, this end. Right, right there. Yep. Okay. So hold that down there. Perfect. Go? That's good. What about the other one? Nope. Oh. Thank you. So the hog panels I'm using are 50 inches wide. I'm going to be using two of them. So I need the length of the 1x6 in between my angle to be 100 inches. So I just went ahead with Olivia and we marked a hundred inches. I'm just going to take my square and run a line. And I know my two by four that I'm going to be putting here needs to be on this side of the line. I'm going to go ahead and do that on both ends. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to put pre-drill my screws in place. I'm using these two and seven eighths inch long headlock fasteners. You don't need to use these, but they're a little on the pricey side, but they work really good. And for my main structure, I want to have it held together with these fasteners. You can use regular deck screws if you want. So your frame of the chicken tractor is going to kind of look like a sleigh. Now I'm just using some leftover three quarter inch pine boards I have for this next part. You can use whatever you have. They don't going to be a hundred inches long. Doesn't really matter the width. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to screw them on the bottom. That way when I put the hog panel in, I have a place to rest it on. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Once we have pine boards attached to both sides of the runners to hold the hog panel off the ground, we're going to grab the hog panel, and then we're going to be then we're going to be securing the hog panels with these staples, inch and a quarter, galvanized. Excuse me. 
So I went ahead and I put a staple in every other square all across the bottom. And then after that I went ahead and I took a pine board, ran it along top of it and screwed it in there to sandwich it in place a little bit tighter. So then you want to use a 2x6 that's 36 inches long, hold it up on the hog panel and trace the radius. So now I went ahead and I cut four two by fours, 70 inches long. I have two pressure treated ones, and I have I have two pressure treated ones, and I have two just regular pine. If I had four pine ones, I would have just used all pine. I ha only had two, so I'm using the rest pressure treated. It'll be a little bit heavier, but it's all right. It's what we had. So I just went ahead. And I set my 2x4s at the very edge of my radius piece for the top header and I screwed them in from the top. Now I'm just going to mark 17 inches from each end. Take my square and just make a nice line so I can see it. Now it's not on level ground, so I can't use a level to level off the doorway, so I'm just using my square to get the uprights where I need them before I screw them. So now not only do I want to make sure the uprights are square, I also want to make sure the width from the top and the bottom is the same. And then for the door, I literally just used what we had around the homestead here. I had a bunch of pine boards when we built the house. I ripped them down to four inches for the outside frame, for the cross pieces, and then for the inside pieces are from down three inches wide. I'll show you how I built the outside of the door. Then I had some aluminum screening lying around, put that down, put my boards for the inside over it, screwed it all together, and that's how I built the door. These hinges, just had these sitting around the house, screwed them on the post, then I just used some cardboard on the bottom and then on the top to shim it up so I had like an even space all the way around the door. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put the hinges in. Well, 
So then I went ahead and I set the chicken tractor up on milk crates. Up on milk crates. So it was a foot up off the ground. And we just took the roll of 60 inch wide one inch chicken wire mesh and went all the way around the chicken tractor. I left the foot hanging down so that way when the chicken tractor is back on the ground this will be lying out on the ground so if an animal comes up and tries to dig under the fence to get in the coop they won't be able to. This is the chicken tractor all done. I covered it with greenhouse plastic. The plastic over the main part goes from one side all the way up. It's got a two by four on top of it, screwed down, sandwiching the plastic to another two by four inside the hog panels. And then it goes down on the other side. And what I did for weight and to be able to roll it up is on the bottom, I took like two pieces of strapping of pine, sandwiched the greenhouse plastic in the middle, rolled it up a few times and screwed it. And then when I want to, I can roll up the sides. I just put ropes through and I tie it up. So right now it's still getting cool at night. I just roll down the sides and the chickens stay nice and warm. When I know it's going to be warm throughout the day, I roll up the sides and I can roll up the back. I moved it tonight and you can see they've already scratched and ate some of the grass. So the latch on the inside is a regular gate latch. The reason why I don't like it is when you move it around and it's not on level ground, it doesn't work freely. So I'm just going to use, I'm going to end up replacing it with a regular eye latch. The door also opens in, so when you open it, if there's any chickens, you kind of push them away so they don't sneak out on you. I have a 2x4 going all the way across the inside of the hog panels, attaching each end. The biggest reason I did this is if I want to use this in the winter time, or even if I just leave a plastic on it, I don't got to worry about the snow load bending the hog panels. And then for my width length, I went length. This 2x4 right here is 6 feet long. My upright 2x4s are 72 inches. And then my 2x6 that I cut my arch in is 36 inches long. And then I just traced out the arch of the hog panel. It took me two hog panels to make it. If you don't have greenhouse plastic, that's fine. You don't need to use greenhouse plastic. You could use a tarp. We live up in northern New Hampshire, so if I want to, I want to be able to use So if I want to, I want to be able to use this in the winter time or late fall and be able to keep the chickens very warm. This is what it looks like when all the sides are rolled down and the front's covered. They're all tucked in, ready for night. So that was just a little final tour of the chicken tractor and how it's all put together. I just wanted to go over and explain it to you a little bit better. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and share the video on Facebook, Pinterest. It really helps a lot. So. We enjoy having your feedback, so leave comments. And like I always say, guys, we'll see you right back here next time at Lumna Acres. They like eating my boot for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs>